The following program may contain coarse language, violence, nudity, mature subject matter, or scenes which may not be suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back to another edition of the X Zone. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. If you would like to send us an email, XON at XONRadioTV.com and on all social media sites, XON Radio TV. And we're coming to you around the world tonight on the Exxon Broadcast Network, Talkstar Radio Network, Mutual Broadcast Network, and Channel 34 on Simul TV. Tonight, my special guest of this hour is Dr. John Brandenburg. We had John on, oh, I believe it was a couple of months ago. And we were talking about death on Mars. And uh, we were talking about something that happened 300 to 500 million years ago. And I'm going to repeat that. We're going to be talking about something that happened 300 to 500 million years ago. And what you're going to be hearing is fact, not fiction. Joining me now is Dr. John Brandenburg. And John, welcome back to the Exxon. Always great having you with us, good sir. Oh, it's a great honor and pleasure to be on your show. Uh, and uh, to you, my friend, a very belated happy birthday. 70 orbits around the sun, the big 70. <laughs> John, uh, beginning 70th first orbit. There you go. There you go. And many more orbits to come. Yes, of course. John, uh, tell our listeners and viewers who may not have had the opportunity of listening and watching the last time you were on the show, tell us about, tell them about Dr. John Brandenburg. Well, I am a. And we just lost a Dr. John. John, are you still there? Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't know. It it froze up, my friend. But you're back with us. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm. I'm basically uh, a plasma physicist uh, working on uh, unified field theory, mm -hmm. uh, controlled fusion, uh, energy, and um, advanced space propulsion. Now, because I've always been interested in advanced space propulsion, and because if you're interested in uh, unified field theory, you become interested in cosmology, you end up thinking about the whole cosmos and of course the human place in it. And, uh, but I had a strange detour in my career uh, back in about 1983. I was very naive then. I believe it or not, I've been told in graduate school there were no UFOs and that's what I should tell anybody who asked me. Mm -hmm. I was working at a big government lab at the time, and all of us students kind of were told this in a group, and we all were talking amongst ourselves around the coffee machine saying, you know, what's, what's going on? Why are they telling us to tell people there can't be any UFOs or warp drive or faster than light travel, meaning people from other stars? And, but at the same time, uh, we we're trying all just to get our, get our degree uh, PhD degrees and get out of there, get a good job. So um, it tended to be a, a situation where you basically just did what you were told and didn't ask any questions. And that was fine. Then, of course, I got out of, uh, I, I finished my degree. I got out and I got a good job. Mm -hmm. And, um, but, um, I was working in another nuclear weapons lab called um, uh, Sandia Labs in Albuquerque, and we went through the uh, nuclear winter thing came out then. And here we were working in the nuclear weapons lab, and this nuclear winter thing comes out. And not only that, but like two weeks later, they started a international crisis that was secret but we came as close to a nuclear war as we did during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And we all knew something was going on. It was called Able Archer 83. 
and it started as a NATO exercise and the Russians became convinced uh, they were very rattled because of Afghanistan and shooting down this Korean airliner mm -hmm. that they were losing the Cold War and they felt very cornered. And so they decided that the NATO allies were staging a Trojan horse military exercise and they were going to we were going to attack them in the middle of this, ex of this supposed war exercise. And the the morale among my colleagues just disintegrated. My, I heard so many people talking about their personal despair that the nuclear winter, there was going to be a nuclear war and nuclear winter was going to kill off their entire family, even if they got them out of town, away from the blast sites. And uh, um, it put me in the mood where I thought, gosh, there must be. All right, and it seems so we have a freezing going on with Dr. John Brandenburg. Uh, he'll be back with us momentarily. Uh, Craig and Master Control is working on it. Mac Alexander in programming is working on it. We're trying to find out, and Dr. John Brandenburg is back with us. Welcome back, John. Yeah. I, I, for all I know, I've got too many files on my computer. I tried to clear off a whole bunch of them today, and I've been writing a scientific article, and you go on the net and you're constantly grabbing articles yeah. and, and downloading them. And we lost. In, in any case, uh, the, the morale at the lab collapsed. Mm -hmm. My own office mate who was a happy-go-lucky character. Turned to me one day. He was, you know, I shared an office with him. He was a very pleasant fellow, very happy-go-lucky. But he turned to me in the middle of this one day and said, you know, I used to think that if there was going to be a nuclear war, I was going to race home get my wife and kids and get head out to the hills. But now I'm just going to get up on my rooftop six pack of beer <laughs> and watch the whole thing go. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm sitting, I'm just sitting there working on some equations and it suddenly he says this, says this to me. And I finally, I, his name was Malcolm. And I said, Malcolm, what kind of beer do you think you'd be drinking? <laughs> <laughs> And that made him laugh and put him in a better place. <sighs> but anyway, hey, so when I saw this face on Mars stuff over Christmas mm -hmm. break, I suddenly realized, oh, my God, there might be a dead civilization on Mars. Just imagine if we found that it would end the Cold War. So my, my motivation was to end the Cold War and try to prevent a nuclear war from happening on Earth. And... Um, Needless to say, we investigated the, the face in Cydonia and the pyramid nearby it. Mm -hmm. There's a pyramid nearby it, about uh, less than six miles away. And we, I even found another site where there's a, two faces, one of which looks very similar to the face at Cydonia. They're called, it's a place called, <laughs> believe it or not, called Galaxus Chaos. <laughs> so we've dubbed the face, the face of Galaxus. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So we have two faces uh, that are very well photographed now. We have the pyramid near the first face. We can find brickwork on that. Uh, we found helmet ornaments on the face. Uh, so basically, we not only have evidence for a thermonuclear holocaust, but it looks like it was targeted on somebody. And that's before, the terrible, terrible, sad news about all of this. All right, before you go on, you were talking about a nuclear winter. And maybe, yes. may, there, and I'm sure there are listeners out there who aren't very well acquainted with the term. So how would you describe a nuclear winter? A, a nuclear winter, believe it or not, was inspired by a dust storm observed on Mars that covered Mars from the North Pole to the South Pole for six months. It was back in 1971. The U.S. had sent a probe to Mars called Mariner 9. The Russians had sent three probes mm -hmm. to Mars, but they couldn't be reprogrammed. The uh, American probe, however, had a computer on board that could actually be reprogrammed. So it just went into hibernation and just waited out the storm. But the this 
they studied this storm. They couldn't believe a storm could cover the entire surface of a planet from pole to pole. And then they realized the same thing could happen if there was a nuclear war on Earth. And if that happened, the um, deaths from starvation and cold would be far greater than the deaths due to the blast and the fallout. And so it was a terrible thing to discover. But because it came out just before this Abel Archer crisis, right. and the Russians and the Americans both knew about it, it may have prevented a nuclear war. So Mars, a dust storm on Mars, may have prevented a nuclear war from occurring because it made both sides hesitate. You know, and, if, the, if the face on Mars is legitimate and yes. the pyramid is legitimate, why hasn't NASA... And they are, then why, ha, why hasn't NASA confirmed this? Well, uh, that's the $64 billion question, Ron. And um, being Canadian, where the government is very open and transparent, mm -hmm. <laughs> just joking. I know your government is just as addicted to secrecy as ours yeah. is. Uh, <laughs> we look at it this way. If you find a dead civilization on Mars, it becomes part of essentially a subchapter of the UFO cover. -up. You're covering up the presence of intelligent life in the universe. You don't want the public uh, to find out about it. If they do, then they'll start asking questions about what happened, really happened with Roswell, et cetera, et cetera. So you can understand. And the when NASA was first formed, they commissioned a report by a government think tank called the Brookings Institute. And the Brookings Institute said, if you find, you might find signs of a dead civilization on Mars. If you find it, suppress it. <laughs> but why? Because they felt it would be bad for public morale and um, but, cause but people it, to start asking a lot of questions. And uh, they just felt it would be possibly devastating psychologically to very religious people, etc. But if that's the case, John, why are we sending people back to Mars? Well, that Brookings report was done back in 1960. So right. it's, it's more than half a century after that happened. People are much more used to the idea that we're not alone in the universe. Mm -hmm. I think the government has decided that um, they have to break it to the people that we're not alone in the universe. And believe it or not, Mars is the best way to do it. If you find life on Mars, then you found it in the stars. You know, you can extend. And, and, and if you find a primitive, extinct humanoid civilization on Mars, these people did not have fangs mm -hmm. or horns. They, you know, they had, apparently have faces that looked a lot like ours. Then this is much less upsetting to people. Then, it, you know, telling mm -hmm. people there's alien spacecraft flying around at night, abducting people and doing sex experiments on them. And there's alien bases on the moon. This, this, by the way, all comes from a science fiction. You know, the first place where all that appeared was in a science fiction movie called The Mysterians in 1957. It's made by the same group that made the Godzilla movies. Mm. And they had UFO abductions hybrid human aliens, they had human traders, they had bases on the moon, and they had uh, some really spectacular directed energy weapons too. So, so, so basically Mars is a way to break it to the public that we are not alone in the universe without causing people to get that upset somebody some people are always going to get upset john stand by we've got to take our first break exo nation oh, our oh, guest absolutely this... rob yes uh, all right buddy uh exo nation our guest this hour is dr john vandenberg and uh, he's got a you can find him on twitter and uh, we'll be back on the other side of the short break talking about death on mars this is the exo i'm rob mcconnell don't go away
Question, what is the name of the unique blend of coffee you get that has been formulated by a neurologist, a neurobiologist, and a pharmaceutical chemist? Answer, you get Beautiful Mind Coffee, a unique coffee blend that tastes great and has herbal ingredients that your brain will love, and it is not just coffee, it's brainalicious. Dr. Rathbone, Dr. Jang, and Dr. Winslow, the scientific team that created Beautiful Mind Coffee, decided to collaborate on a coffee focusing on brain health. As for those herbal ingredients found in Beautiful Mind Coffee, Dr. Rathbone, Dr. Jang, and Dr. Winslow, utilizing their combined extensive scientific research background, worked with many natural and herbal products until the exact formulation that is found in Beautiful Mind Coffee was created. With a unique scientific formula not found in any other coffee being sold or served, Beautiful Mind Coffee is the only coffee blend that contains three herbal ingredients found to aid in boosting your daily mental clarity and focus. Every cup of Beautiful Mind Coffee contains scientifically formulated amounts of maca root powder, green tea extract, and American ginseng, all supporting good brain health. Taking care of your brain's health now can help delay or prevent the onset of cognitive dysfunction, including dementia, Alzheimer's, and more general memory loss as you get older, just by enjoying the delicious flavor of our roasted coffee and herbal ingredients found exclusively in Beautiful Mind Coffee. Did you know that cognitive dysfunction also refers to deficits in attention, verbal and non-verbal learning, short-term and working memory, visual and auditory processing, problem-solving, processing speed, and motor functioning? For more on Beautiful Mind Coffee, the three scientists who formulated Beautiful Mind Coffee, and more details on the three unique herbal ingredients in Beautiful Mind Coffee, visit www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca. Beautiful Mind Coffee is now available online at Amazon.ca and Amazon.com. To order Beautiful Mind Coffee, visit www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca today. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, talking about Beautiful Mind Coffee, this portion of the x is being brought to you by Beautiful Mind Coffee. Visit their website at www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca now before I get back to Dr. John Brandenburg. Something else that Beautiful Mind Coffee is doing that is totally unique when it comes to saying thank you for visiting a website. If you visit the Beautiful Mind Coffee website at www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca, you can get access to 50 exclusive TV channels, including the Exxon TV channel, 95 online video games in five different languages, as well as thousands of movies on demand, all free. No gimmicks, no catches. You do not have to uh, pay one single red-headed cent. All you need to do is go to beautifulmindcoffee.ca, scroll down, and you're going to see a link to 50 for free. Just click on that. It takes a three-second or five-second sign-in, and away you go. All this from Beautiful Mind Coffee, their way of saying thank you for visiting their website. Dr. John Brandenburg is my guest. Welcome back, John. A quick question for you. How do we know that the inhabitants of Mars were humanoid? Well, the faces at both both sites mm -hmm. look very human. Humanoid. Let's they look humanoid. Right. And the the you remember the humanoid face, uh, you know, bi bihedral. It's symmetric right and left, and um, two eyes, nose, and mouth it, mm -hmm. is found in a lot of other creatures on earth besides just human beings so, you know, mm -hmm. everything from the praying mantis and uh to uh, to you know the, the primates and then of course 
human race. And uh, it's actually a very practical face if you're going to be a technological um, kind of creature because it's flat. So you don't have a big nose in the way. So you can see stuff that's right below your face if you're working on something like mm -hmm. arrowheads or or basket weaving, something like that, something valuable. If you're a roving uh, member of a tribe, a uh, hunter-gatherer tribe, uh, this is all. This is a very practical arrangement for, you know, having eyes, nose. Okay. So, so it's it's not. The faces are humanoid. They are not strictly human, um, but they're at first glance you just think this this is a very human looking face. And it's on three of them, three faces. Now, what do you think the technical level or the the um, the advancement level of the planet Mars was at the time of its nuclear destruction? Um, sadly, it looks like it was quite primitive. It looks like old kingdom Egypt or the Mayans, mm -hmm. you know, Mexico old Mexico type of civilizations, building pyramids. They notice they seem to have fortified a lot of high ground. That's typical of a primitive uh, kind of society, uh, rather warlike. Um, so it doesn't look like we don't know what the level of civilization is. And, and, and it, you're... Looks, it looks like it was fairly primitive. In your opinion, would they have nuclear capabilities? No, no, I don't think so. Then, then why the weapons, would mm -hmm. if they if these are nuclear detonations? We found two radioactive hot spots, right? That are enormous, and the shock waves apparently went all the way around the planet and collided on the far side, forming another hot spot. What's called the antipode, uh, you know, with some uh terrain variables thrown in but um the weapons went off in midair apparently they didn't leave craters at hiroshima and nagasaki there are no craters right. that's they right set off the bombs air blast midair to cause maximum destruction mm -hmm. and um so the same thing seems to have happened on mars only a much larger scale and the weapons were as big as the Empire State Building, apparently dropped from space. So this does not look like somebody on Mars trying to blow themselves up. It looks as though someone wanted to make an example out of Mars. Um, I, I, I've jokingly said it's Mars is Alderaan in Star Wars, you know. Mm -hmm. They asked Governor Tarkin why Alderaan, and he says, "Well, the other re the rebel base Tatooine that's that's too remote to make a good example. We want to we want to terrorize people. It's Genghis Khan making pyramids of heads, uh, and uh, at least that's what you look at it and you take in all of this. That's the kind of gut reaction you get was that this was." done mars was made an example of you know thank it, god this happened a long time ago mm -hmm. whoever did it is long gone but it also shows you it, the nature of intelligent life in the universe is dangerous to other intelligent life i'm sorry i know that sounds uh, uh negative but uh, we must face up to the fact that we are typical in our behavior of intelligent life in the universe. If you want to know what intelligent life in the universe acts like, turn on the news. Yeah. And, and you know that a lot of uh, things that we have done historically to each other mm -hmm. are very bad. And therefore, we must face the um, consequences. Well, we must be responsible for that knowledge. For mm -hmm. one thing, we have to calm our come come to uh, come to agreement on our 
to set aside our differences in favor of common defense. Ask Captain Kirk, a good Canadian. <laughs> Let what me ask you about this. Let me ask you, John. Yeah. This is a two part question. Number one is then why are we going to Mars? And number two, is there a chance or is there the possibility that what happened to the Martians 300, 500 million years ago would happen to new space explorers investigating the planet Mars? Well, we live in a universe where bad things can happen. Look out, you see supernovas going off, stars exploding, gamma ray mm -hmm. bursters sterilizing entire galaxies they're in. Uh, of course, uh, we, we know we uh, perish, the dinosaurs on Earth perished because of the big asteroid impact. There have been other mass extinctions on Earth that we don't even understand why they happened, but they could have had an extraterrestrial cause. Mm -hmm. uh, I will tell you that when I made this discovery of this evidence, I reported it to the Pentagon. I didn't report it to NASA. I knew they wouldn't pay any attention to me. So I reported it to the Pentagon and uh, the, they sent somebody over to listen to my briefing. He took careful notes. He asked a lot of questions. And I said, what do I do with this discovery now that I've made it? And, and um, he said, we'll get back to you. And then they got back to me six weeks later. And they said, this was back in about 1990. No, it was actually about 2000, about the year 2000. And he, mm -hmm. they said through channels, they said, we see no reason why you shouldn't publish this. Which, uh, so apparently they want this to come out. They want the, 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 the best defense, if you're in the defense department and really trying to do your job, the best mm -hmm. defense is an informed public who understands basic reality. We now understand we're not alone in the universe and that we are, we share the universe with people of like passions to ourselves with all that that implies, both good and bad. The, no dis the no dis ones are out there and the Klingons, so are the Vulcans and the Andorians, if you want to use a Star Trek analogy. No disrespect, John, but how do we know we're not alone in the universe? Where's the proof? Oh the the proof is on Mars. But that's I a mean, theory. We found that's the, the pyramid has a square of brickwork missing from it. Mm -hmm. The face uh was rephotographed and they they rephotographed it deliberately from different lighting and different viewpoint than we'd mm -hmm. seen before. So it looked very unfamiliar. It's got nostrils in the nose and uh, ornaments on its helmet mm -hmm. that are linear. And the same thing is true on the face of Galaxis Chaos, the one that looks like the face of Cydonia. So if you, it, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out what this means. Not only that, we have Lots of evidence that Mars was once a living planet. It's one of them is, is bright red. It's bright red because its surface is highly oxidized. It's red Georgia clay. It's got mm -hmm. ferric iron, iron in the ferric state, which is rust red. Same color as our blood. It's called hematite, in fact. So, so I would argue that we have compelling evidence basically proof that we're not alone in the universe, that people quite different from us developed independently on another planet, but they had enough similarities that we recognize their, their uh, creations. So, and what we see on Mars, we can extend to the stars. Um, uh, okay, but so I go one... out at night at the, and I look at the stars. Yeah, which I've done, some, and I wave. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, the universe can't be that hostile. Otherwise, uh, you know, we wouldn't be having this. We wouldn't be having this radio talk show. Wrong. That's right. But oh, you know, but obviously, we have to make 
provision for we have to become spacefaring. We have to go up to Mars, find out what happened to make sure it doesn't happen here. But what happens if we get to Mars and we find out that nothing happened? Well, then we will at least figure out how to get to Mars. It would and what? Total loss. But, but why no, is that? Now, but why is that important? If why go to a dead planet? Oh, it's not dead. They they found that uh, in the spring mm -hmm. and summer, the oxygen levels in the Martian atmosphere and methane levels, both of methane and oxygen are products of bacterial activity. Right. When it gets warmer on Mars in the northern uh, uh, hemisphere, mm -hmm. uh, the level of oxygen rises. And oxygen is part of the Mars atmosphere. Nobody could explain why there's so much of it. And then there's right. also methane and swamp gas uh, from decaying, um, you know, uh, bacteria breaking down old organic matter. And that happens. So you have a, a cycle of oxygen and the methane rising in the atmosphere in the warm months and then um, decreasing during the cold months. The bacteria shut down. So something is decomposing. Yes, yes. Well, we wouldn't call it, in this case, decomposing. It's more like uh, old uh, mat old organic matter is being okay. eaten. Quick question before we go to my break. Is, sure, it pos sure, it, is it possible that whatever is on Mars could be dangerous to humans here on Earth and that by going to Mars, we could be opening up a Pandora's box that will actually lead to the demise of this planet? Well, actually, Mars is giving us free free samples all the time. They found so many meteorites from Mars, more mm -hmm. than 100 now. Mars, Mars is next to the asteroid belt. What happens on Mars is a big rock from the asteroid belt will hit Mars mm -hmm. and knock little rocks way out into space. They'll orbit the sun several times and then they right. end up getting on earth so we've actually shared a lot of organic matter and, and many of these meteorites have what look like traces of life in them now gotta understand nasa is biophobic it does not want to find life on other plants even though it claims to be looking for it it's like uh, the police detective who's on the take <laughs> And he uh, supposedly is investigating. Uh, he finds the uh, victim with numerous stab wounds and says, well, it looks like they tripped while they were carving their turkey or something, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, and just as proof of this, we sent life experiments to Mars to see if there was life in Mars soil and they got positive results. They were strange results, but they were, And we are freezing again with Dr. Brandenburg. We're going to go to our commercial break, and hopefully by the time we get back, Dr. Brandenburg's system will be up and running as we continue here in the XO from our broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens and they kept repeating to me over and over again, simultv.com, simultv.com. What's simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a simultv.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I remember now last night, I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great-grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about Simultv.com. She even spelled it out for me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com.
And welcome back, everyone. Over the past uh, commercial break, we tried to contact uh, Dr. John Brandenburg, but we had no success. So, unfortunately, we are going to have to um, get the good doctor back on the show so we can further discuss his, I guess we can call them theories, since, uh, I don't know, there's really no hard scientific proof that I'm aware of. Uh, 300 to 500 million years ago, a nuclear war on Mars, the face on Mars, and the pyramids are real, according to the Dr. Brandenburg. And um, just give me a second here, explanation. I see. Nope. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's there's other questions that I wanted to ask Dr. Brandenburg, in, including his take on the moon hoax. Who knows? What we're going to do is we're going to take an early break here. Uh, we're going to play some features for you, members of the Exxon Nation, who are tuned in to us on Simul TV. And uh, I'll be back on the other side of the news at six and a half minutes past the hour as the Exxon continues right here from our broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. I'm Rob McConnell. Send me an email, Exxon at ExxonRadioTV.com. Question, what is the name of the unique blend of coffee you get that has been formulated by a neurologist, a neurobiologist, and a pharmaceutical chemist? Answer, you get Beautiful Mind Coffee, a unique coffee blend that tastes great and has herbal ingredients that your brain will love, and it is not just coffee, it's brain alicious. Dr. Rathbone, Dr. Jang, and Dr. Winslow the scientific team that created Beautiful Mind Coffee decided to collaborate on a coffee focusing on brain health. As for those herbal ingredients found in Beautiful Mind Coffee, Dr. Rathbone, Dr. Jang, and Dr. Winslow, utilizing their combined extensive scientific research background, worked with many natural and herbal products until the exact formulation that is found in Beautiful Mind Coffee was created. With a unique scientific formula not found in any other coffee being sold or served, Beautiful Mind Coffee is the only coffee blend that contains three herbal ingredients found to aid in boosting your daily mental clarity and focus. Every cup of Beautiful Mind Coffee contains scientifically formulated amounts of maca root powder, green tea extract, and American ginseng, all supporting good brain health. Taking care of your brain's health now can help delay or prevent the onset of cognitive dysfunction, including dementia, Alzheimer's, and more general memory loss as you get older, just by enjoying the delicious flavor of our roasted coffee and herbal ingredients found exclusively in Beautiful Mind Coffee. Did you know that cognitive dysfunction also refers to deficits in attention, verbal and nonverbal learning, short-term and working memory, visual and auditory processing, problem-solving, processing speed, and motor functioning? For more on Beautiful Mind Coffee, the three scientists who formulated Beautiful Mind Coffee, and more details on the three unique herbal ingredients in Beautiful Mind Coffee, visit www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca. Beautiful Mind Coffee is now available online at Amazon.ca and Amazon.com. To order Beautiful Mind Coffee, visit www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca today. <laughs> 